Ross from the Infectious Group Podcast and Vinyl Channel. I'm a close personal friend of Al, and you should be too. Coming up on the channel today, we are going to detail Squeezebox, the Weird Al career-spanning box set on vinyl. So, being a vinyl collector and a lifelong Weird Al fan, this Squeezebox box set is one of those things you almost feel like you will into existence. Um, you know, three, four years ago, a friend of mine asked me, you know, hey, what's some stuff that you'd love to see on vinyl? And I started listing off a couple of things I've detailed in other videos about uh, albums from the 90s and maybe some things that are missing from the 80s. And uh, one of which I said was, you know, there's a whole section of Weird Al albums that have never been on vinyl. And I just love the guy and I'd love to see that. Well, you know, if they did that, they'd probably have to do a whole box set. And I don't know if anybody would do a whole box set. Uh, of just Weird Al stuff. And then uh, a couple of months later, the <laughs> squeeze box got announced, which is in fact a career spanning set from Weird Al. Now this was available on CD as well. Um, I of course ordered the vinyl edition of it and I am so wildly impressed with so many things about this box set. Um, some quick details on this. This was available as a direct order in the January of 2017, pre-orders went live for this and they made it clear up front that uh, it was going to take several months to fulfill the orders uh, because they were more or less uh, gauging interest and seeing how much they would have to manufacture for the unique style of the box that it comes in, um, all the cover art and so on. So I placed my order in January of 2017 and didn't get it uh, delivered to me until November of 2017, but to say it was worth the wait would be an understatement. And uh, they promised, they delivered on everything that they promised with the box set, which is all you can ask for, especially with a record company. The two, the CD version of it was available for $199. The, vi the vinyl edition of it was available for $399. Now, I have a bunch of detail that I'm going to share regarding how awesome this box set and things that I love about it, but I do want to detail a couple of things that are very, very negative right off the top. It's two main issues that I have, um, and they're both negligible. One of them is way more than the other, but it is definitely something that uh, I want to point out and just say, oh, it's not all sunshine and roses with this box set, and I can't make clear enough that once I bump these negative things out of the way, I've got a ton of positive things to share. The first thing that I'm going to share as negative with this box set is the cover art itself for each of the records, the actual jacket, is so flimsy it would make a record label from the late 80s blush. This is hands down the, the, the thinnest jackets that I've ever come across. Um, not only are they thin and, and flimsy, uh, the printing on them is great. The pictures are great. It's high res pictures. They all, uh, other than the fact that they don't have any uh, legal information or any uh, UPC codes on the back, they all mirror the original releases uh, when it was on vinyl or the original CD release. Um, but in addition to them being flimsy like they are, uh, they're also very, very small. And the records themselves were all in um, very bad paper sleeves. I've long outspoken about how much I don't like paper sleeves. Each record was in a very, very thin paper sleeve inside these uh, original covers, which are, to give you an idea of how small these actual jackets are for them, um, I went ahead and sleeved up each record in its own uh, anti-static sleeve. Another thing I've long time been a champion of is uh, making sure to inner sleeve and outer sleeve your records. Once I put the LPs in their own individual um, anti-static sleeves, they no longer fit in the covers that came with the set. So that'll give you an idea of how uh, how small these covers are. They just they just barely don't fit. Now again, I use outer sleeves on my whole collection, so I have a workaround for that. This entire set doesn't stay in the accordion box, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, it, I file these in with my regular records under Weird Al, and I just do them that way. I just put the uh, anti-static inner sleeve in the back of the outer sleeve. So it's not a huge problem, but 
it was definitely something that I noticed right off the bat when I took the, the set out of the packaging. That was an issue. And then this other one is, is far more minor, but it is something that I want to point out. Each of the records have yeah, on the inside, a uh, the inner label is the cover art from the actual record and a new label that has the uh, side A and side B listing on it. So now every set in every record in the set is done this way. So if you're going to listen to it straight through or whatever, what I'm about to say isn't a problem. But you don't really know what side is side A and side B unless you uh, count off the number of songs on the label against that side of the record and then if the number of songs on each side are offset then you have a good idea um or you can just remember it but with the amount of records that i have and what i listen to um it's not something that i always remember oh the label side is the side a or side b so i realize that's a really minor gripe and uh, i have other records that are much much bigger with respect to uh, problems with respect to the inner label it's just something that was a minor annoyance to me Now, as far as the small and flimsy cover art goes, I do want to point out that, first of all, I think it's a cost-cutting measure. I mean, well, obviously, with it being uh, thinner paper and not cardboard and whatnot, they're going to save money there. That's fine. Then, with the actual accordion case itself, I'm certain that it was far, far, far less expensive to make even a slightly smaller accordion for all of the records to go in. Um, so I'm okay with that being offset. Plus, like I mentioned near the top of the video, for $2.99 for a box set with 15 LPs, I mean, that's a great, great deal. And I'm okay with making the sacrifice with the overall packaging being a little smaller. Again, me personally, what I do is I inner sleeve the records. I put both the flimsy cover and the uh, inner sleeve in an outer sleeve and I file those. And then I just put this on display in the room, the actual accordion and the book, which we'll get into as well. So again, I get it. I understand. I'm certainly not one to excuse record labels or artists um, from cutting corners, but I feel like here, those particular corners were cut specifically to give fans a better deal on all 15 albums, and I'm okay with that. There's probably a certain cross-section of Al fans who uh, bought it as an investment or never planned to open it, like want to have it as a keepsake as well. I personally love opening all my records and I do listen to everything, so um, I don't really have an opinion on that if somebody else did that. But if you are going to purchase the set to listen to, just know in advance that you're either gonna have to leave the records in paper sleeves or sleeve them up the way that I did. And on another note, I would like to point out, again, the price on this is $299.99 for 15 LPs. I have purchased box sets by artists with less records in them for over double what this costs. Retail cost, not paying Discogs or eBay prices. Retail cost, I've purchased box sets from artists with less records for more money than this set costs, and they still came with paper inner sleeves. So, again, it's all relative. So music-wise, what do you get in the Weird Al Squeeze Box? You get pretty much everything he's ever recorded, which is fine by me. You get 14 studio records, six of which have never been on vinyl prior to this box set. Not sure what the plan is on uh, represses. Uh, I don't believe this set is ever going to be produced again, but I'm not sure what the plan is to get uh, regular releases of Al's vinyl sets. Uh, but the six that are included in here were never on vinyl previously. As far as sound quality goes, the comment I can make on that is that um, I had the greater majority of the records that were available on vinyl previously. I had original pressings of them. Um, I believe I was missing UHF and um, Alpocalypse, I think. But I had uh, In3D, Dare to be Stupid, uh, Polka Party, um, and uh, Mandatory Fun, at least, uh, and the self-titled first album. And uh, I've listened to both back to back, and actually I ended up giving a friend of mine uh, my original pressings after I listened to this whole thing because they, they sound exactly the same to me. Everything in the box set says it's remastered audio, but 
it sounded exactly the same to me as good or better so i was happy to gift those to a friend so him and his kids can enjoy the magnificence of weird al and um i have everything that i need in this set so having said that the middle section of his career from uh alapalooza through straight out of linwood had never been on vinyl previous to this set being released so you get the a good cross section of weird al stuff that was never available prior to this which is uh great for weird al fans just even just a casual fan let alone a completionist so you get a whole series of albums that were never on vinyl uh previously or at the very least were never available uh, regularly something that you couldn't find easily i think i think one of the reasons why i didn't know in uhf as an original pressing is the last time i saw one in a store uh in a retail store used was i think over a hundred dollars and so and that was years before this box set came out so you get all of that um, they included as a pre-order by the way the close personal friend of al shirt so now uh, instead of just telling people that i can prove it by showing them my retail bought t-shirt that i spent a couple hundred dollars on and they'll believe me that i'm a close personal friend of al Outside of that, and I'm certain this was huge for a lot of Weird Al fans, uh, there was a 15th LP included that is called Medium Rarities and This Rules. This has stuff gathered that was that was available before, which is why I love that it's called Medium Rarities. Um, the Spy Hards theme, uh, the extra gory version of The Night Santa Went Crazy. Um, there's things like that that were available that Weird Al fans could gather together. Uh, Headline News, the song that was only included for the permanent record CD box set back in the 90s. Um, but that's all gathered here in one spot, which I think is really rad. Uh, and then you get a couple of other things that were never released before, some demos and whatnot. My personal favorite thing on this extras, uh, medium rare, is uh, there is a parody of the Beatles tax man called Pac-Man that I think is fantastic. Um, I know Paul McCartney is one of those artists that never gave Weird Al permission to re uh, release parodies. Um, but uh, Paul didn't write Taxman, so I don't know why that wasn't released, but it is included on the Medium Rarities uh, box set, which I think is sweet. Altogether, you get 15 LPs with one of the most brilliant comedic minds, and I think one of the most underrated backing bands in music in the last half century. I, I mean, it's just incredible, incredible music. If you're watching this and you're a Weird Al fan, you already know all this. If you're a casual Weird Al fan who's only heard the parodies, um, or you know the one or two big hits that are off of each record and if you like good comedy you really should look into some of these records and uh, explore some of the stuff that wasn't parodies because some of weird al's original songs i think are uh, as good or in some cases far better than the parody that was showcased off of each record so uh, definitely a treat as far as what's included audio wise for weird al fans i mean you you, you can't for the retail price of 2.99 you can't be getting all this this amazing music and comedy gold. The last thing I'm going to detail, and I'm going to include some pictures and whatnot of this so you can see a little bit more up close, is the packaging itself and the book that comes with it. I mean, if you're going to put out a Weird Al box set, what cooler way to put it out than in an accordion? And, I, you know, I think this is just... Oh, such a cool touch um, especially again for for the price point that the box set was released at you got a couple of straps on the back here that hold in the the book that I'm going to detail a little bit on in a minute there's no way I could cover everything in that book with without the video being much much longer but you know non-functional keys this is just a plastic mold um, not metal or anything like that but uh, working straps, which I think is kind of cool, um, you know, hold in to hold the box set all together or it'll fold out. Uh, so, you know, it's um, I read some fans were a little disappointed with this when it finally shipped. They felt like the uh, pictures showed that the keys might be functional. To be honest, for the price point and, and the way the pictures look to me, I really wasn't expecting any of that. Um, I'm not saying anybody's wrong who, who might have expected it. I just wasn't expecting it. Um, it was a, the whole package was a little smaller than I expected when it arrived. Um, and then again, I was like, oh, and these jackets are really small too. Not the end of the world though. I think, again, for the price point and for everything that you get included, I think the packaging is sweet. And then 
this is certainly a last but not least item in my opinion this book that is included with this set just squeeze box the complete works of weird al this book is an absolute treasure trove for weird al fans the amount of time and detail that went into this book is just stunning there's notes about everything you've ever wondered about there's uh, pictures of everything you've ever wondered about uh, behind the scenes promo pictures recording pictures um, details on uh, nearly every song that's in the set um, I mean it's just amazing and you know if you're like me if you grew up on Weird Al uh, you always saw the finished product every couple of years you always saw uh, the album or the tour or the video of course and you never had any idea what was going on behind the scenes maybe a little bit when he was doing Al TV and that type of thing but nothing nothing to the extent that's included in this book um, even if you're not gonna buy this whole box set or if you're an Al fan and you didn't and now that they're limited the aftermarket price has gone up I'm certain you can find probably some high, high quality scans uh, on, out on the internet of the contents of this book absolutely absolutely worth taking a look at it is just a fantastic document of, of everything to do with Weird Al's whole career So that is my wrap up on Squeezebox the complete weird works of Weird Al and it's Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, package all the way across the board. I did list a couple of things that were uh, minor issues, but I personally found a workaround for those. And uh, I think for what this costs at retail, you really couldn't beat it at the time, which is why I grabbed a pre-order as soon as I could. And uh, if you've ever wondered what's in the set, what it looks like uh, more in real life instead of still pictures, hopefully this video helped you out. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hopefully today is the day that I earned your subscription. If you're interested in Weird Al or more on the set or want to just share a cool story about your being a Weird Al fan, please by all means drop a comment below. If you have the set yourself and you've got uh, questions or comments or uh, any information you want to share with everybody else, make sure to drop that comment below. Uh, either way, thanks for watching.